Hey, what's up everybody? For those of you who are new to this channel, I try to talk in depth about space transportation, especially the ways that regular people like me could go to space. One of those ways is through Blue Origin and their new Shepard rocket. And my question today is, are they being totally transparent about their operations now? Welcome to Epic Future Space for June 22nd, 2016. So Blue Origin has conducted the fourth test flight of their reusable New Shepard rocket and their crew capsule. And this test took place on Sunday, June 19th, and they broadcasted it live. This was awesome. So today I wanted to review that webcast. So first we got a pre-recorded video of the rocket rollout to the launch pad, and I'm actually kind of suspicious that the rest of the video might have been pre-recorded as well. It was just a little too tight, and they even ended the video with a montage of what we had just seen. I'm not not saying that they couldn't edit it together live, but it just felt a little bit too polished for a live webcast, especially the first one that they've ever done. But let's just assume that the whole thing was live. I really enjoyed the host commentary, it was very informative, although I did want to see their faces at some point. We only did get a few seconds of mission control audio during the countdown, and without any background noise like we've gotten used to with SpaceX webcasts, it felt odd to not hear cheering or applause or anything like that. What I really liked was the mission progress bar on the side, and I really liked how new progress milestones appeared for the landing portion of the flight. It was also very cool to see the basic telemetry for the rocket during the ascent and landing, and to get basic telemetry for the capsule during its landing. All in all, I really liked the webcast. I just wish that we could have heard and seen more from Mission Control, and also seen some internal views from the capsule itself, but that's okay, this was still awesome. Aside from from having this live webcast, there were some test objectives with this flight as well. And one of those objectives was to try to land the capsule safely using only two of its parachutes instead of the normal three that it would have. They also used retro propulsion to slow down at the last second. And I'm assuming it's like the Soyuz capsule in that regard, but honestly, I didn't even know they had retro propulsion on this capsule until their announcement leading up to this flight. And honestly, I was looking really hard at the webcast, and yes, there's a plume of smoke right before a uh, touchdown, but I didn't see any sort of flame, so I have no idea what they are or where they are on the capsule, whatever their retro propulsion system might be. This flight also had three Pathfinder suborbital experiments on board. Last time they launched the New Shepard, they had two experiments on board, and these three experiments are qu uh, quite a bit cooler. I'll let the researchers themselves explain. Thanks to Blue Origin, I will fly an original experiment in two-phase fluid dynamics, that is, a liquid and a gas, in a test vessel. When a spacecraft's liquid propellant system or life support system is in zero gravity, capillary action or wicking is the dominant force on the liquid, causing liquid to settle and stay in one place in a container or to wick off to another place. This new experiment is built around a spherical test vessel. A reservoir holds the liquid until it is needed. LED panels illuminate the experiment and two video cameras record views of the liquid behavior. The ability to predict these two behaviors is very important to design of successful, safe, affordable, and dependable spaceflight systems. This experiment is testing a theory that's over 100 years old that states if you have a fluid in which the temperature and composition are not the same everywhere, a very small but measurable fluid motion can be observed. Normally this is overwhelmed by gravity, so we need to perform the experiment in weightlessness. And we're very excited to be able to do this experiment on Blue Origin's New Shepard rocket and in collaboration with our colleagues at William Jewell College. The results of this experiment should help us make things in space better. Hi, we are the Medea team from Braunschweig University in Germany. MIDEA stands for Microgravity Experiments on Dusty Environments in Astrophysics. With MIDEA, we intend to investigate how dust balls in the young solar system stuck together to form larger and larger bodies. In the three MIDEA setups, different dust samples are dispersed. By shaking the vacuum glass tubes containing the samples, realistic low-speed collisions among the dust balls are generated. These collisions are observed by high-speed cameras. We use Blue Origin's New Shepard vehicle because it provides us with a few minutes of microgravity in excellent quality. 
Very cool. It seems like that data could be very useful to Blue Origin when they have the upper stage version of their new Shepard using the BE3 engine. And, you know, at least for the fluid experiments, that would have a lot of usefulness for their upper stages. However, unless they do have plans to start asteroid mining, maybe these other experiments would be useful to them as well. I'm super happy that we got to see this flight in the format that they presented it. And I'm also very excited to see their progress and hope that their test flight program gets finished soon so they can start flying people. There's going to be a lot more opportunities soon, especially now that they're part of the whole NASA Flight Opportunities Program to start flying even more suborbital payloads. But I mean, ah, I'm really excited. Jeff Bezos has even speculated that their prices will be announced soon and it'll be somewhere in the range of Virgin Galactic's prices, somewhere between $200,000 to $350,000 per flight. But he also said that that price would go down as they started their operations. So oh, I'm really hopeful that the price does go down and that they start their operations soon and so that someday even a regular guy like me can fly on this vehicle, at least while I'm still healthy. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. My name is Michael Clark. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And let me know what you think about this flight. And I also want to know what your predictions are for when they might start flying people. Also, I'm now on Patreon, and there's a whole bunch of stuff that I want to do with this channel. Mainly, I want to be able to go to space conferences and get footage of interviews and demonstrations and just collect a whole bunch of awesome stuff for you guys. But I also want to get more gear, and I want to bring in more people to get involved with this channel. I really like how on Tomorrow, how we have other correspondents like Lisa and Jared to produce space pods. I would love to do that, but also have more people to help with the workflow so that I can produce a lot more content on this channel. And in any case, I really want this channel to grow, and I really want to thank Tim Dorsmegan, who is my first bronze patron, donating $1 every month. Every penny helps to this, and at the very least, I can't let Tim down, so you're going to be seeing a lot more videos from me very soon. And if you would like to help support this show, please visit patreon.com slash epicfuturespace. The more support I get, the better quality these videos will be, and the more frequently they'll come out, and just the more awesome stuff we'll be able to do. Who knows, maybe I'll even get to fly on one of these sub -orders vehicles someday. So thank you very much Tim for supporting me and with my whole Patreon rewards I'm going with the whole precious metals theme right now but I might change that to like a space flight crew type of theme. I don't know let me go let me know what you guys think about it. Check out the Patreon page that I have and, and uh, give me any input that you guys might have. Anyway, I keep promising to talk about habitats and NASA's Next Step program, and I do want to talk about that really bad, but first I wanted to give some updates about SpaceX, specifically their Dragonfly program and their in-flight abort test. So that's what I'm going to talk about in my next video, which hopefully I'll have out this week. I'm shooting for Friday right now. But uh, after that, the next video after that, which hopefully will be coming out next week, we'll be talking about Bigelow's beam module and the progress made on a lot of these new future habitats for deep space exploration. So stay tuned for that. Thanks again for watching this video. Keep moving onwards and upwards, everybody. And don't forget, add Astra to the stars.